Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today to hear about our new strategy for working with you to build success for the tourism industry in British Columbia over the next three years. The last time we did a call like this was during COVID, and it's great we're able to connect again during a happier and more positive time. We're thrilled you're here. So let's settle in and get started. This session has been recorded so that anyone that couldn't make it today can watch it at a later time and to give you an opportunity to review it afterwards, if you like, at your convenience. We have lots of content to share over the next 45 to 50 minutes. We'll touch on the context that informed our strategy and then share the key elements of our strategy. And throughout the call, please submit your questions through the chat function as well as time for questions and answers at the end of the presentation. For those of you whom I haven't met yet, my name is Richard Porges, President and CEO of Destination BC. And joining me today is Scott Fraser, the Chair of our Board of Directors for Destination BC. Good morning, Scott. Good morning, Richard. Thank you for the introduction. On behalf of the entire Destination BC team, we, we gratefully acknowledge that we are joining you today from the Vancouver office, which is on the territory of the Coast Salish peoples, specifically the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh and Squamish nations. We also acknowledge that the work Destination BC does stretches across the territories of all Indigenous peoples in British Columbia who have been taking care of the land for millennia. On a personal note, if I have learned any wisdom in my years, it came when I was working with the New Chalneth Tribal Council on the west coast of Vancouver Island. And I was taught a term, a, a concept, if you will, Hishukish Sawak, all things are connected, everything is one. I truly believe that this strategy reflects that, that, those words of wisdom. One of the greatest pleasures in this role is that I get to thank people for what they do every day. First, we want to thank Minister Popham for all, and all of her staff in the Ministry of Tourism, Arts, Culture and Sport and all the ministries across government that work hard to support BC's tourism industry all year round. Second, we, we like to thank all of you, British Columbia tourism operators, associations, marketers and sectors, partners and colleagues for the efforts that you have made to, and the resilience that you have shown over the last three years. It has been truly inspiring. And we also want to thank everyone who provided input into the creation of Destination BC strategy. This includes Scott and other members of our board, our Tourism Marketing Committee, and over 2,000 of you from around the province. And finally, we want to thank Destination BC's staff for their hard work and the passion they have for this industry and doing such amazing, award-winning, impactful and collaborative work. The board is proud of the work that has been achieved by Destination BC and excited for the future and what this new strategy brings to our collective work. Your success is our success and we think this new strategy will set all of BC up for an even greater success still. Our 2023-2025 corporate strategy defines what we'll be focusing on over the next three years and identifies our strategic levers to help us move forward over a further 10-year horizon. Richard and the team will provide the details, but I'll say this. The strategy is centered around building even greater collaboration in the tourism ecosystem. Looking back at Destination BC's first 10 years as an organization, our greatest successes and our global competitive advantage have come from working together with our partners. We had the right strategies, some of our progress paused and the, through the pandemic, of course, but now we are getting back on track. Tourism in BC has a bright future in ahead indeed. Speaking of a bright future ahead, we are very, very fortunate to have the Honourable Minister Lana Popham championing the tourism, arts, culture and sport portfolio as of late last year. She served as the Minister of Agriculture, Food and Fisheries from 2017 until 2022. I had the opportunity to work closely with her during this time and she is fantastic. In this role, she oversaw the expansion of the Grow BC, Feed BC and Buy BC programs. So I think adding Hello BC, Explore BC and Tourism in BC to her resume is just a natural fit. Minister Popham, 
also has a background in transportation, economic development, and agriculture, as well as being a sustainable tourism business owner herself. She co-founded and operated Barking Dog Vineyard on Vancouver Island. Minister Popham is amazing, but even she can't be in two places at once. And as the legislature is in session today, she provided some sentiment to share with you. British Columbia is a world-class destination and tourism is one of our province's most dynamic industries. A flourishing tourism industry is important to every part of our province and benefits all British Columbians. In March 2022, we released our strategic framework for tourism 2022 to 2024, a plan for recovery and resilience. A roadmap for building tourism in our province and re recovering from the pandemic. Destination BC plays a key role in delivering the strategic framework by providing industry leadership, supporting business and communities, and elevating British Columbia's reputation as a world-class destination. Destination BC's new corporate strategy builds on our shared vision of a prosperous and sustainable tourism sector for everyone and in all corners of the province. Together, we will see the tourism sector thrive throughout all the seasons to be equitable and inclusive and contribute to the respectful growth of the Indigenous tourism sector, all of which are guided by commitments centered on lasting and meaningful reconciliation. Our strategic framework, along with Destination BC's new corporate strategy, ensures we will continue to come together to connect, collaborate, and take action to rebuild a more sustainable and resilient tourism industry so that all British Columbians and their families can prosper today and in the future. I am confident that Destination BC, in collaboration with our tourism industry partners and all levels of government, will work to inspire travelers from all across Canada and around the world to visit all corners of supernatural British Columbia for years to come. Thank you, Minister Popham. Thanks, Scott. And I echo Scott's sentiments. The minister and the ministry staff have been great to work with. And thank you, Scott, too, for your guidance as our board chair. We've all lived with the hardships our industry has gone through over the last three years. The pandemic, flooding, fires, highway closures, heat waves, and more. In the next set of challenges are upon us with inflation, workforce issues, global tensions like Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and further impacts of climate change, just to name a few. Whether these challenges are close to home or across the globe, we all need to continue to work together to take best advantage of the opportunities and positive prospects ahead of us. 2022 was a more positive year for the tourism industry than any of us anticipated. So let's take a look at a few things we were able to achieve together. Destination BC spent 2022 collaborating with tourism partners throughout the province to share British Columbia with the world. Through our collective efforts, tourism recovered far more quickly than expected. Here are 22 of our accomplishments for 2022. We worked with Indigenous Tourism BC to infuse Indigenous values and cultures into the supernatural British Columbia brand and evolve the British Columbia effect into the new global campaign, Find Yourself. We drove fall getaways from BC and Alberta, winter bookings from Washington and California, and spring and summer travel from the UK, Australia, and Germany. We collectively reignited partnerships with travel trade and travel media to remind travelers of BC's transformative nature, beauty, and experiences through hosting media trips and fam tours, through Wellbeing Week in the UK, the resumption of the Vancouver to Brisbane direct flight from Australia, and jointly hosting a camping event in China with online travel agency Tunio, where activities were amplified through an influencer campaign and social media. We also facilitated cooperative marketing projects to help with recovery, and the Tourism Data Hub now supports 13 clients and members. 
and one shared audience project achieved a 32% increase in bookings. To support destination development strategies around the province, we help to change visitor behavior through the Sea to Sky corridor, increasing vibrancy in downtown cores, creating opportunities for more sustainable travel, and supporting grant writing efforts. Many programs supported entrepreneurs and inspired new experience development, including seven Spark mentorship and grant programs that help bring new tourism ideas to life, and an intensive experience development program in the Columbia Valley. To help visitor center teams connect visitors to their communities, a digital and social media playbook was developed. And we created Destination BC's first diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility strategy. A significant step towards fulfilling the commitments we made to truly represent our province's beauty, strength, identity, and diversity of people. These are just a few of the countless accomplishments we've achieved together. With the support of incredible partners and operators province-wide, we know 2023 will be just as powerful. I applaud each and every one of you for our collective accomplishments in 2022. Today, we're focused on the future, where we're going from here together. Our new corporate strategy focuses on what we will do over the next three years. The big, complex, and sometimes difficult leaps forward that we need to take to set us up for future success. In BC, we have a great track record of achieving success together. For example, the 25-year journey growing Indigenous cultural tourism in BC, the 2010 Winter Olympic and Paralympic Games, FIFA Women's World Cup in 2015, province-wide destination development planning, wildfire, flood, and COVID recovery, just to name a few examples. We're building on that track record now. Our intention with this strategy is, first, to extend tourism seasons and increase the benefits of tourism across all regions of BC. Second, to enable more tourism organizations and businesses to access technologies, marketing channels, planning tools, data, insights, and training that are usually only available to large businesses and organizations. And third, to take action to continue to grow a sustainable, authentic Indigenous cultural tourism industry in BC. And now I'd like to invite Neil McInnes, Destination BC's Vice President of Corporate Development, to join me to provide more background. Over to you, Neil. Thanks, Richard. We want you to know that our corporate strategy was developed based on valuable insights, engagement, and input from many sources. This includes over 2,000 tourism industry voices over the last three years who informed how we move forward beyond the pandemic. We listened, and we heard that you want us to keep working hard to support immediate and continued recovery through our marketing and development efforts. And we clearly heard industry is looking to us to broaden our definition of what success means for the visitor economy in the future. I want to say thank you to everyone that met with us during our industry meetings last summer. We're so appreciative of the information you shared and our time on the road had a very positive impact on our work and our relationship with you all. Every stop renewed our absolute awe of the amazing people and places here in BC. I was fortunate to visit Northeast BC, Prince George, Mackenzie, Chetwin and Hudson's Hope. I even managed to sneak in a hike at Tumblr Ridge with Destination BC's Kathleen Harvey and Therese Finnegan, the Director of Economic Development and Tourism for the District of Tumblr Red Ridge. Wow, I was blown away. Spectacular scenery. The process was so successful and inspiring that we've committed to spending more time meeting with you and your communities around the province again this year. We also completed a comprehensive global environmental scan that reflected the changing landscape and trends caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. 
We looked at the roles of other organizations in the BC tourism ecosystem to determine where our efforts were best applied and where we were needed to support the good work of others. And as a Crown Corporation, we aligned with our legislative mandate and other plans and commitments from across the provincial government. In particular, we're guided by the BC Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples Act and Action Plan, the Stronger BC Economic Development Plan, the Clean BC Climate Action Plan, and the 2022-2024 Provincial Strategic Framework for Tourism. We also look globally at how other jurisdictions around the world are rethinking tourism too. Through this work, we identified some key takeaways to guide our corporate strategy. First, the tourism industry is moving through recovery more quickly than even the most optimistic of us expected, although unevenly, as overall performance in the second half of 2022 was nearing that of 2019. The United Nations World Tourism Organization reports that international tourism was on track to reach 65% of pre-pandemic levels by the end of 2022. That means there's still 35% of travel revenues left unspent as recovery continues. Hotel occupancy was close to 2019 levels from July to December, with average daily rates performing higher than pre-pandemic. Total visitor entries from the U.S. were at 80% of 2019 levels by December, with Europe, Mexico and Australia all over 60% and China reopening to travel. This means there is once again global hyper-competitiveness for the high-yield international traveler. You can see here that our forecast for tourism in BC in 2023 shows overnight visitor, visitor spending nearly returning to the same level as 2019 this year and exceeding 2019 levels in 2024. In our estimated forecast scenario, we see visitation and spending showing strong growth through 2026. The key takeaway here is we're back on track and there's lots of opportunity ahead. Second, consumer travel behaviors have changed as pent-up demand continues to support pandemic recovery. For now, travel remains a budget priority. Here in BC, travel behavior is returning to pre-COVID patterns, with some exceptions, resulting in underutilized capacity in some areas of the province and during some seasons in mature destinations. This chart shows that the seasonality of international visitation to BC did not change between 1999 and 2019. For 20 years, the seasonality of the industry has not been overcome. The big takeaway here is that we need to do something different. Branding, marketing, and strategic destination development need to work together to capitalize on underutilized capacity and to build shoulder season demand. Third, global and social forces have changed the landscape where we operate and within BC, communities are looking for carefully managed growth. We know we have a greater role to play in moving tourism in a direction that is better for the industry, Indigenous peoples, the planet, and all people living in British Columbia. Fourth, 93% of tourism businesses in BC are small businesses with less than 50 employees, and 78% of communities that collect the Municipal and Regional District Tax or MRDT, can be considered small in size. Small tourism businesses in small communities in BC are doing amazing work considering the resources they have. How can we make them even more effective and enable them to compete globally in tra attracting travelers? There's an opportunity to reach beyond individual and community abilities and make a greater impact by working together. Fifth, Destination BC is one part of a large and diverse tourism ecosystem. We embrace our responsibilities and are committed to supporting other lead organizations on, on matters that are important to all tourism businesses in BC. For example, labor shortages continue to be a challenge for many tourism businesses, and fortunately, there are great organizations like GoToHR and Indigenous Tourism BC leading those efforts. The key insight here is that we need to apply our efforts on those aspects of our industry that, are, that need our focused attention for the greater good. I know that's a lot of information, so here's a recap of the key takeaways. The tourism industry is moving through recovery, and there's lots of opportunity ahead. That has led to continued competitiveness for the high-yield international traveler. 
We have a greater role to play in moving tourism in a direction that is better for the industry, indigenous peoples, the planet, and all people living in British Columbia. We all need to pull together to strengthen the tourism prospects for BC. And we need to apply our efforts at Destination BC on those aspects of our industry that need our focused attention for the greater good. Thanks for setting the stage, Neil. Through these insights, we saw that we had a stronger, longer-term purpose that needed to be better reflected in our new strategy. Our 10-year horizon, our North Star, is to improve the lives of all people living in British Columbia and visitors through tourism. This purpose reflects the shift that the global tourism industry, governments and society are making around the world and here at home. We've matured as a destination, as an industry and as an organization and quality of life is now part of our DNA. And we need to upfront to underline that in order for that statement to be true, we need tourism businesses to be profitable and sustainable. And we need to inspire visitors to travel throughout BC and have remarkable experiences that make them want to refer others and to come back again. To go with that, we have a three-year aspiration to grow social, cultural, and environmental and economic benefits for all people in British Columbia by sharing the transformative power of BC experiences with the world. We'll measure our work through eight key goals. Five are industry goals that every single one of us here today have a role in achieving. First, tourism businesses are profitable. Second, people love traveling in BC. Third, people living in BC value the visitor economy. Fourth, people travel year round and to lesser known places in BC. And fifth, the tourism industry meets or exceeds the BC Climate Change Action Plan targets. And then there are three internal goals for Destination BC. First, BC's tourism industry partners value the work we do. Second, people working at Destination BC are well supported for success. And third, Indigenous voices, values and presence are strengthened in all our work. And with that, I'll pass the mic to Maya Lang, our Vice President of Global Marketing, and Ali McKay, our Vice President of Destination Management, to walk through the strategic levers that will help achieve our goals. Over to you, Maya. Thanks, Richard. And I agree with Neil. Getting out and meeting so many of you last year was amazing. Recently, I had an opportunity to travel to the northern tip of Vancouver Island to experience Alert Bay, Port McNeil, Cape Scott, and to see firsthand how compelling our brand and experiences truly are. The German and French travelers I met on the trip were in awe of British Columbia's nature and wildlife. And from our campsites, we could see clam foraging bears a mere couple hundred meters across the San Joseph River. We went to Alert Bay and had a chance to see Kwakwakiwak dancers at the Omista Cultural Center and learn about the vibrant indigenous communities in the area and its rich history. We've taken all of our stories, the experiences we had in our travels and what we learned, and we've woven that into our strategy. And I'd like to take you through that now. The strategy has three levers to drive success, each with a comprehensive set of actions and programs. We're gonna focus on these levers for the next three years to improve BC's competitiveness and improve the quality of life for all people living in British Columbia through tourism over the long term. Ali and I are gonna to speak to these, each of these levers at a high level here, and then we're gonna get into more of the details on some key activities. The first lever at the core of destination marketing and management is compelling reasons to explore BC. It starts by having a compelling brand and set of experiences, but it includes attracting a type of traveler who's going to travel here in the off season and is interested in traveling to different places in the province. It's about delivering the right content at the right time when someone is thinking about a trip or starting to take those steps towards planning a trip to create, we wanna create the interest in coming to BC and then converting that interest to a visit and generating that repeat visitation to create lifetime value for British Columbia. 
The second lever is all about how we work together as an industry through partnerships to increase our competitiveness. And we call this our globally competitive tourism ecosystem. It is all about providing enterprise level systems, data, access to expertise and knowledge throughout the entire tourism ecosystem. This is so that we can all reach beyond the limitations of individual capabilities and can compete effectively against those destinations who may have more funding or more compelling offerings. And for our third lever, we're focused on the responsibility Destination BC has under BC Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples Act and our commitments to continue to grow Indigenous tourism in BC, ensuring Indigenous peoples are in determining and leading the future of tourism for their communities. Respectful growth of Indigenous tourism is a new strategic lever for us. While supporting Indigenous tourism has been part of our work here at DBC for over 25 years, we felt we needed to strengthen our efforts. So let's take each of these uh, one at a time. The compelling reasons to explore BC. For decades, the tourism industry, including Destination BC, we have worked hard to attract visitors during shoulder and non-peak seasons and to entice them to travel throughout the province. Despite our best efforts, the majority of visitation to most rural areas and small towns still takes place during the peak season. And as Richard mentioned earlier, for the last 20 years, over 64% of international visitors to BC have traveled here in our core summer months between May and September. So the results continue to be the same. While in total, the industry has grown rapidly over the last 20 years, we have not flattened the seasonality curve. And this perpetuates the year round challenges for businesses, such as not being able to attract and retain year round staff or not fully utilizing infrastructure capacity, such as meeting spaces and not generating enough revenue to put aside emergency funds to manage the unpredictable nature of entrepreneurship. All of this uncertainty affects the profitability of tourism businesses throughout the province. And don't get me wrong, we need the mature destinations to be powerhouses in generating the tourism revenue that provide economic benefits for their communities and all of BC. And 2022 has shown how quickly our cities can rebound. Some did so well, they actually exceeded 2019 in terms of uh, visitor volumes, hotel room revenues, occupancy rates, and the amount of municipal and regional district tax they collected. But we need to grow the off-season disproportionately, and we need the places with capacity to catch up, to rise faster. So what is the focus shift in our strategy? The shift is nothing less than changing the way that we're branding, marketing, and developing British Columbia as a tourism destination. And do this in a compelling way to drive that incremental growth in shoulder season visitation in mature destinations and all season growth in rural areas and communities where capacity exists. From our research post COVID, we identified we needed to increase awareness of what there is to see and do in British Columbia. We are a huge diverse province and it can be difficult for people around the world to truly understand and appreciate what we have to offer in a way that makes them want to come visit. Think about some of the places around the world that are the size of BC. How well do you think you know these and know what there is to see and do in them? You know, for example, what is there to do in the northeast of Brazil compared to the central west? Or think about New Zealand. How, do you know the difference between their regions, Taranaki, Hawke's Bay or Gisborne? I've been there and I don't even know. Think about how hard it would be for Tourism New Zealand to get everyone in Canada to understand all 15 of their regions, where they are, what there is to see and do and why they should travel there. That's really hard. So we need to make it easier for travelers to get to know BC in a way that makes them want to come visit. We need to simplify the number of BC travel options being promoted, which we recognize can be confusing for visitors. And we want to move towards promoting and developing a small number of globally compelling routes and places that cover all of British Columbia. Yeah, you, you can think of it like a memory game. 
Look at this card for 10 seconds. How many of these do you think you'd remember if I were to ask you about them tomorrow? If you're anything like my son who has a photographic memory, unless of course you ask him where his shoes are, you might actually do pretty well. But if you're anything like me, of the 20 images, maybe you'll recall three, maybe four. Now imagine that these cards were photos of 20, 30, hundreds of destinations. This is why we want a limited number of compelling and memorable routes and places. We also need to move away from targeting visitors just by looking at you know, simplistic variables such as their age or how much they spend and move to a more comprehensive approach that also looks at travel motivators or where they will go. And what's new is how much positive impact they will leave behind, thinking about the social, cultural, environmental and economic impacts. To attract these visitors in a whole new way, we know that we don't only need a strong brand, but also a set of compelling experiences that are going to dis increase the dispersion of tourism revenue all year round throughout BC in a responsible way. As part of implementing our last corporate strategy, we came up with a unique solution. A big part of that solution is the seven routes and places we've been calling the Iconics while they were in development. Now that we are ready for implementation, we are calling the strategy Compelling Reasons to Explore BC. And the strategy rallies industry around our shared strong brand, Supernatural British Columbia, and provides the opportunity to reimagine our province through the elevation of these routes and places that are going to inspire growth in the shoulder season visitation in mature destinations and four season growth in rural areas and communities where capacity exists. The compelling reasons to explore BC Lever is also at the core of an important step in integrating destination marketing and management efforts to ensure tourism growth and development is benefiting the quality of life for all people in BC. We give our visitors reasons to explore BC by delivering the right content at the right time through compelling storytelling, which drive interest and then converts that interest to a visit. And delivering exceptional experiences once visitors are here in BC is an equally important part of the strategy to entice that repeat visitation to create lifetime value for British Columbia. So here's what we're doing to move this strategy forward. We're building industry alignment around the shared magnetic brand of Supernatural British Columbia. We are so excited about the evolution of the brand this year and we're really eager to share more and we'll do that in another industry call. So certainly watch your inboxes for that important invite. We're also launching, launching our new sub brands, those seven routes and places that you just heard Maya mention. This fall, we'll be launching two of those brands with a bang loud enough to be heard in all of our key markets from right here at home to across the globe. I'm pleased to announce that the first two out of the gate will be the North and the Rockies to Rainforest. And of course, remember, these are still just working titles and we will share more on those names and how those will be positioned very soon. To support the launch, we will also activate destination development efforts while continuing to prepare the remaining routes and places that will be launching in 2024 and the years beyond. In addition to that work, we'll be integrating destination development plans with branding and marketing. This step is to do what we can to ensure that those who are also making public and private investments in tourism are able to support dispersion goals by creating more reasons to travel in the shoulder season. There's more information on the routes and places on our corporate website, and we promise to continue to share more throughout the year and again when we get closer to the launch day. There's another important part of this lever to ensure that we're branding and marketing and developing tourism in BC in a smart, responsible and sustainable way. And that is looking at the type of traveler who will provide the most benefit to BC communities, to residents and to businesses, as you just heard Maya mention. We want to do a better job of finding what we're calling responsible travelers who will see more of BC. These are travelers who, you know, for example, are mindful of their impact on a destination 
especially highly visited destinations. They will consider when they visit, the resources they use, and the footprint they leave behind. They're supportive of the local economy, favoring locally owned accommodations, restaurants, businesses and guides, and they're knowledgeable and interested in the local culture and language. To do that, we're implementing a global audience segmentation project. This is a whole new approach to selecting who we're targeting in each market with our global marketing efforts. And we will nurture the development of remarkable and regenerative experiences to entice those visitors to disperse by providing them with new, inspiring reasons to travel throughout BC. Imagine 10 years from now, more visitors discover new places and spaces. They fall in love with the fall leaves, the snowy seasons and spring blossoms. All year round, more businesses are able to stay open. Year round, more people across British Columbia benefit from jobs. Year round, momentum builds for a vibrant and responsible visitor economy throughout the province. Next up is a globally competitive tourism ecosystem. This is an opportunity and a challenge. As Neil shared, our tourism industry is predominantly made up of small businesses and small community DMOs, destination marketing organizations. They don't all have the staff or the funding to compete globally in attracting travelers and building their visitor economy. Penticton can't compete with Portugal. Invermere and Hundred Mile House can't compete with Italy. And no matter how amazing the attractions are in BC, it's hard to compete with a global reach of Disney. I mean, they have Moana and Star Wars and The Lion King and their own media networks. And yet around the world, BC tourism has a great industry reputation for working together in a collaborative way. Ali, didn't you just meet with Travel Oregon and they wanted to pick your brain about how we do it here? In fact, we've created a true competitive advantage through the unique way that we work together. And the opportunity is to take this advantage further. Our challenge is to evolve these efforts in a way that strengthens our competitive advantage so that other destinations can't catch up. The Globally Competitive Tourism Ecosystem Lever is all about how Destination BC works together with all of you and through partnerships to increase the competitiveness of British Columbia as well as individual tourism businesses. It's about working cohesively together to share our intelligence, integrate our go-to-market strategies and systems, and combine our individual resources and expertise. Here's an interesting fact for you. Did you know that an octopus has three hearts, eight tentacles, and nine brains? Yeah, there's one central brain, and each tentacle has its own mini brain. I love that. And yet all these body parts, they move together as one. They're smart, they're clever, they're agile, they build and use tools, and they're probably the world's best camouflage artists so they can be potent competitors while hiding in plain sight. Over the last five years, we've been forming and advancing partnerships through the Tourism Data Hub with large DMOs and piloting projects with large partners such as Air Canada and Destination Canada. Our hearts, brains, and tentacles have included our co-partners such as Destination Vancouver and Tourism Whistler, as well as Tourism Kelowna, Tourism Richmond, as well as Indigenous Tourism BC, and the Destination Ski Resorts in BC. And we've achieved strong results together by using our combined brain power, clever marketing, and shared tools. We're on the way to becoming more potent competitors in tourism globally. Now is the time to move from working with just these select partners to bringing more of the industry into the brain trust, more communities, more destination management alliances, more of the 19,000 tourism businesses here in British Columbia. Imagine how impactful we could be if we had 19,000 hearts, brains and tentacles, and if we all still moved together as one. Our globally competitive ecosystem strategy is all about enabling more tourism organizations and businesses to access technologies, marketing channels, planning tools, data, insights, and training that are typically only available to large businesses and organizations. This strategic lever will help us be more inclusive, more efficient, more impactful, and save money while doing it. Funds that can be reinvested to make a bigger impact. Yeah. So here's what we're doing to move this strategy forward. 
we're making relevant content, data, analytics, and training more available to the community DMOs. This will reduce duplication and help those organizations shift their dollars to where they're most needed, whether it's in marketing or development. We're making the efficiencies in our own marketing channels, technologies, audience, and insights that our partners have gained through the Tourism Data Hub and making it more wildly available to more tourism organizations. This is actually something that we heard frequently when we were on the road last summer. We're encouraging more collaborations to make larger impacts. For example, the Land of Hidden Waters Marketing Cooperative unites the communities of the South Caribou, the Lower North Thompson, Wells Gray and Kamloops to educate self-guided visitors about the unique fishing, wildlife and nature experiences along BC's fishing highway, promoting the corridors of Highway 24, 27 and 5, as well as the back road to Wells Gray Provincial Parks. Over 20 communities within the Vancouver Coast and Mountains region are working together to one, enhance resident and community engagement, two, improve industry adoption of sustainable and responsible tourism practices, and three, promote respectful and sustainable visitor practices. 20 communities working together can make a substantially big difference. And approximately 60 tourism businesses in Tofino are supporting the Clay Quiat Tribal Parks by collecting a 1% ecosystem service fee on behalf of the nation. Those contributions are reinvested in the people and the ecology that comprise the life of the place. 60 businesses can generate a lot more than just one. And as you saw in our opening video, the Team BC Travel Trade and Travel Media teams work collaboratively to generate substantial awareness and interest for travel to BC from around the world. Yes, yeah, that's a good one too. We'll also help provide greater access to technology, expertise and skills to help small businesses and organizations become even more effective in their marketing and development efforts. We're planning to help build industries, destination management and regenerative tourism abilities as well. And we'll also be doing our part to help maintain social license for the industry, which in plain language means we're taking leaps forward to manage tourism in a better way so that more people living in BC benefit from and value our visitor economy. 10 years from now, we want to continue to hold the competitive advantage that we have now. In fact, we want it to be stronger. Businesses and communities will be benefiting from the power of our collaborative marketing reach and the regenerative development efforts. Our third strategic lever is respectful growth of Indigenous tourism. The province's beauty, strength and identity are deeply rooted in Indigenous history, culture and traditions and the diversity of people living here today. People differ in race, ethnicity, culture, gender, identity, ability, among others. And this is what makes us individually and collectively unique. Destination BC recognizes that we can champion this diversity, amplify the voices of all people living in BC, and more authentically connect people, places, and experiences. As you heard Neil mention earlier, all communities, both Indigenous and non-Indigenous, are at the core of tourism. We recognize and respect their authority to decide what role, if any, the visitor economy plays for their communities. Each place has peoples, cultures, and customs, and communities will determine how and when their stories are shared. For Indigenous communities, this may be through the voices of Indigenous elders, Indigenous-run organizations and platforms, or providing permission to non-Indigenous-led organizations. For example, during my own road trip this summer, I learned about a story that really caught my attention. During the Second World War, over 21,000 Japanese Canadians were forced into internment camps, including one in East Lillooet at a memorial I visited. 
Conditions at the camp were terrible and food could be hard to come by. This part of the story I already had awareness of, but what I didn't know that I learned this summer is that sympathetic members of the Statlian First Nation helped the 300 internees by smuggling sacks of salmon into the camp on a horseback via a back road. This story showed me how important it is for us to tell the full story of British Columbia as part of reconciliation, also as part of our destiny, our diversity, our equity, our inclusion, and our accessibility efforts. Something that you hear us at DBC call DEIA. It requires us to build up our own knowledge our use of protocols and our cultural understanding and awareness capabilities. We've made commitments to work together to support the BC Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People Act and Action Plan. Further, we have shared a commitment with Indigenous Tourism in BC to create a unified tourism industry in BC, one that enriches the experiences and connections that tourism provides and that respects and provide benefits for Indigenous people, culture and lands for generations to come. This commitment is to continue to grow Indigenous tourism in BC and ensure that Indigenous peoples are determining and leading the future of tourism for their communities. We believe it is an important foundation to the industry's ability to succeed and to compete far into the future. In addition to these commitments, we're available to build our own relationships with First Nation communities that are already active in tourism, if, when, and how they wish to. And as part of these commitments, we need to increase inclusiveness and raise awareness of the diversity of Indigenous cultures and communities in BC. For the next three years, we will be on a journey of taking action to continue to grow a sustainable and authentic Indigenous cultural tourism industry in BC. Here's what we're going to do to move this important strategic lever forward. We're going to continue to work closely with Indigenous Tourism BC as one of our most valued partners. For 25 years, we've had a collaborative, respectful relationship and we are honoured to continue this legacy. We're going to take bigger steps in strengthening our relationships with Indigenous communities. In our work at Destination BC, we're going to do our part to continue to strengthen Indigenous voices, values, and presence with the approval of Indigenous peoples. Specifically, this includes our marketing content and our campaigns, as well as weaving Indigenous culture and values throughout the new routes and places I spoke about earlier. In addition, we're going to do our part to help others throughout the entire tourism industry ecosystem to strengthen Indigenous voices, values and presence within the work that they do. In partnership with ITBC, we're working with Indigenous communities and nations to explore their tourism opportunities if, when and how they desire to. We're going to facilitate collaboration and connection between Indigenous peoples and non-Indigenous peoples through our programs and services. And we're going to continue to learn how best to do our work through lenses of reconciliation, DEIA and stewardship with an emphasis on cultural competencies and inclusive leadership. This includes embedding those practices within our hiring and training plans for our, all staff. 10 years from now, we wanna be further down the path of this journey. We want to see further progress being made in respectful growth of Indigenous tourism. Tourism is about sharing the truth of British Columbia, and we have a role to play in that storytelling and story sharing. 10 years from now, we want the stories we share to ring true and through Indigenous voices, values, and their presence. Thanks, Maya, and thanks, Ali. As you stated, our intention is to extend tourism seasons and increase the benefits of tourism across all regions of BC. Enable more tourism organizations and businesses to access technologies, marketing channels, planning tools, data, insights, and training that are usually only available to large businesses and organizations, and take action 
to continue to grow a sustainable, authentic Indigenous cultural tourism industry in BC. We have a great track record inspiring travel together as an organization and with all of you. This three-year strategy is important because we are now inspiring greater change. Change for good. Change that benefits the people of BC. This kind of change requires we focus on big, complex, and often difficult things to achieve. Truly integrating destination management and marketing is a challenging but important undertaking. Evolving the Tourism Data Hub will require focus. Respectful Indigenous tourism growth is a journey. How our industry collaborates and integrates is unique and complex. Adapting to climate change and hitting the government's 2030 targets is a big task. How the industry will successfully deal with tighter labour markets requires a collaborative solution to a complex problem. What we, as an industry, are doing is not easy, but it's needed. And when we are successful, we will gain a sustainable competitive advantage, making it harder for other destinations to match us. I know that we are up to the challenge. And I know from talking to so many of you that BC's tourism industry is up to the challenge too. And with that, I hope we've inspired you with this overview of our corporate strategy. We will be sharing more details of the strategy throughout the year across our various channels. Before we head to questions, Richard asked if I could touch on the 2023 to 2025 marketing strategy and the annual 2023 marketing plan. Details of the plan will be shared in our industry newsletter and on our website and social channels. And BC Tourism Industry Partners can request a copy by emailing marketing.plan at destinationbc.ca. Further, we're going to be holding a dedicated workshop on the marketing strategy and plan at the BC Tourism and Hospitality Industry Conference on March 2nd. Please join us. And the team will be hanging out at the Destination BC booth during the conference and are happy to talk anytime. Thank you to everyone who joined us today. And thank you to everyone in the industry for all you do every day. We're looking forward to seeing you in Prince George next week and around BC throughout the year. As Maya mentioned, we'll have a booth at the BC Tourism and Hospitality Conference. So please come by and chat with us about the strategy and our programs. The recording of this call will be posted on our website shortly alongside our corporate strategy for you to review at your leisure. And we'll be out and about this summer to connect with you and your communities. Please stay connected with us through our newsletter, our website, and LinkedIn. Thank you again for your time and attention today.